Uh, joining us after, uh, well, I guess the prodigal counselor has returned to the studio uh, after a long <laughs> absence, uh, Rebecca Milsoika from the Twin Falls City Council in studio with us. First of all, were you, you weren't on a vacation or anything like that. You had you had some important things to tend to. It was, yeah. We uh, had the birth of our first uh, child, and so we spent some time recovering from that. Uh, and uh, since it was my first child, I had no idea uh, what I was getting into. Um, so it's been a great experience, though. Um, he's but, going to be a big boy. I met him on yes. Saturday. Yes, yes. He's he's uh, uh, he's growing very fast, and uh, he's uh, about 13 weeks or three months for people who don't. And he's already know, making some noise as if he's trying to like talk, right? Oh, he's very talkative. Yeah, we we joke that he's a future <laughs> elected official. He, I think he got that uh, political blood uh, from his grandpa and his the mom. The political gene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It apparently runs in the Mills family. <laughs> I was going to say uh, the big story coming out of uh, City Hall on Monday, and I know because you didn't have huge turnouts for the budget hearings, that probably it might not be the the, the, the story that catches people's attention, let, let's say like backward parking, which yeah. is ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah. the budget has been adopted, and so you go forward from here. Any real highlights in any of that? Absolutely. Yeah. One thing um, that is notable is that your sanitation bill, if you live in the city of Twin Falls, um, will be going down. Um, it'll actually be reduced by 66 cents um, per uh, pay period, and uh, that's a monthly bill. And, um, and and that's one thing that I asked. I said, wow, you know, how did we find this savings? And I think what people can really take away from that is, and be encouraged by is the fact that uh, their city staff is really looking for efficiencies and looking for uh, ways to save them money. And what's what's exciting is they are using um, some of the gas tax uh, to cover what used to be a street sweeping fee. And they just realized, you know, hey, you know, we can we can cover this cost and we, and we don't need to charge this uh, street sweeping fee. And uh, and don't worry, I asked them, are, will the streets still be sweeped? And, and they said, yes, of course. Um, and so so it's, it's really a, a good thing that people can take away. And you know, by uh, state law, uh, each government, you know, every uh, school district, every county, you can collect, you know, 3% more um, revenue than you did the year before. And so the good news is that we balanced this year's budget with uh, 1.5% uh, tax increase. So, you know, we didn't take that full 3% uh, because we didn't need it. We were able to balance um, balance the budget without uh, uh, too much of an increase on, on the taxpayers. And I was going to say, the only time that people would really come out in large numbers for a budget hearing, if, if you had to have a seriously large tax hike, but nothing like that seems to happen around here in the sense that um, things – Things seem to be somewhat stable, even with the growth in the city, and I guess that growth is actually paying for a lot of the changes that we're doing. Yeah, it, it actually, when when you grow, you increase your value in your community, which reduces the tax burden. You know, because the the way that Idaho does taxes, it's just like a pie. You know, and that that total value, everyone has to take their piece and pay for their piece. And so, you know, if someone's piece gets bigger, someone else's gets smaller. And so uh, what happens if, if uh, you know, there's more people to share that value, of course, you know, your, your share goes down, um, which, which is uh, really, you know, a good thing for people. Yeah, and, and, and that, that law about the 3%, you know, you can't take more than that. Um, what, what is really great is since I've been on council, um, one thing that I introduced was uh, the concept of having a pre-budget hearing. Because the budget hearing that we have at the very end of the process when we're about to adopt it is um, when when the process is all already completed and we invite people and by state code, you know, it says you have to have it at this time. And so I said, well, you know, we're kind of inviting people and then we don't really have time to incorporate what they say, you know, and so it was very frustrating for them. It was frustrating for us. So what the city started doing under the direction of uh, city manager Travis Rothweiler is that uh, we take public input all the way through the process. So we actually have about 13 different opportunities for people to come speak, and and they do, and they have. And, and, and actually on Monday night, um, there was a group of uh, disc golf uh, people that, that like to disc golf. And, you know, I've witnessed as, as I'm out and about in the, the parks that have these disc golf courses is that they are packed all the time. Mm -hmm. They have families, they have older, younger people. It's it's a huge sport that's up and coming and it's it's pretty recent in our area, but um, they, they're asking for another location for a course because then they can hold um, actual tournaments. And right now they kind of do, um, uh, you know, unofficial tournaments and they had about 180 people um, register for their, their tournament a couple of weekends ago. 
and uh, it's just really popular. It brings people. It, it's a great uh, tourism, you know, attraction. It brings people that that go around and and golf, so to speak, in these tournaments. Um, so they came and and they just made us aware that they. Um, would like us to find a location for another course. And I, I think that's great, and, and we'll be able to incorporate that. Um, uh, the council asked uh, staff to bring us an update uh, by February on uh, maybe what what the plan is uh, on the d- new disc golf course. 12 minutes after 9 o'clock, 71 at our studios. Rebecca Milsoika from the Twin Falls City Council is our guest. Uh, you're listening, of course, to Top, R- Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com with Bill Colley. You know, I, I remember about 30 years ago when I was first working in radio, I was working in a city that was comparably sized to Twin Falls. Actually, that city's grown smaller. Twin Falls has grown larger now, so not anymore. But there was a discussion. There were some objections. The city decided to open up a skateboard park, and there were some objections. City government shouldn't be involved with this. But then one of the members of the council stood up and said, tell you what, I'd rather have them out at the skateboard park skateboarding than perhaps standing on a street corner smoking cigarettes and then getting into some other trouble. And so now they have a skateboard park because of that. It was adopted following, I think what he was trying to make a point is that, you know, let's find some diversions for these people, uh, you know. Absolutely. So they don't have idle hands, so to speak. Right. And, uh, and they went forward with that. But we have a pretty decent sized park system already in, 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 in this community. Exactly. And that's why they're looking to locate it within one of our current parks. And so we're thinking it's, you know, not going to be a huge financial burden on the taxpayers um, to just find a location. They're looking at uh, Augur Falls or Durkee's or the city owns some land out by the airport. Um, the great thing about disc golf is it's really uh, low impact and um, low cost because you install the launch pads, which are a little stretch of, of uh, cement that you throw your disc off of, and then you install a little basket, and, and that's that's about it. And I think a full course has has 18 um, uh, baskets. Don't quote me on that. I really don't know much about it. But I know people enjoy it. And, and what's great is it's actually an objective in our um, strategic plan. And uh, it's uh, under healthy community, and it says that we're going to find um, act- healthy uh, activities and embrace those new emerging lifestyle activities um, that people want. And, and it is, it's about quality of life, you know, because of course people want clean water. They want, um, you know, their their uh, sewer system to work. They want streets without potholes, but they also want parks. They also want uh, activities for their children, activities for their families. We've got a few minutes left. Uh, you have an event coming up or a, a date coming up in September you wanted to share with people as well. Absolutely. You know, I want everyone to be aware that we're updating our comprehensive plan. And uh, that might not mean a lot to some people. So what a comprehensive plan is, it's required by state law. Um, but it, it tells your city uh, what kind of zoning to input where, you know. And so it, it makes a difference because if something next to you gets zoned commercial in uh, the comprehensive plan, then that uh, will be allowed. And it may not be developed right now. Um, but it will be in the future. And so it really determines Could be a surprise how... for someone down the road if that happens. Exactly, exactly. So it's good to be involved. And what's great is is the the group that we've hired to um, do our, our comprehensive plan update is, is very involved and very um, good at outreach. And so they're actually going to have uh, another meeting September 11th at noon at City Council Chambers, and it's open to the public, and people can just come and hear. They've, they've already taken a lot of surveys. They've done a lot of interviews, and so they're going to share their preliminary results um, that they found the, the last time that they visited, and um, they will also be at the Optimist Club uh, Wings and Things, so one of their strategies is to kind of go to events where people are, and so the Optimist Club has a Wings and Things fundraiser. It's kind of like a back-to-school uh, tailgate party, and it raises money for the local schools. And so they're going to be there and, um, you know, just go up to their booth, and uh, they have a really easy, short survey, um, and it's just their way of collecting uh, information from the community on it. What do you want your community to look like? You know, how do you want it to grow? How do you want it to develop? Um, because uh, a good community has a good plan. You know, and, and I think that's what, what the comprehensive plan is, is about, is is making sure that, that the way the community grows is um, is in alignment with the way the community wants it to grow. Uh, you've got, a, you've got a, one of your colleagues, uh, Sean, has uh, just uh, announced he's going to be seeking re-election. Um, and I know it, it, it's probably going to be uh, it's one of those things, it's politics, but uh, I don't know if it'll create somewhat of a testy relationship at City Hall, but... The mayor is announcing today that he's going to be challenging your father for uh, county 
uh, county uh, commissioner. Um, is this going to create any difficulties, I guess, uh, within council, or is this just something that happens in politics? Um, you know, I, I think it is politics, um, and uh, I, I believe that we all work really well together and that we're very cordial and, and very civil. Um, so for me, it's, it's really not going to create any problems. Um, it is a little early, I think, to be announcing um, for that. That race is actually not until May of next year, um, but, you know, to each their own. And uh, and, and I think it'll um, – what I love about the system and why I'm involved in politics is that you – the people get to speak and the people get to choose. And so at the end of the day, you you run a good race and you're honest and you're fair and you have integrity and what the people decide, um, I respect that. And so, you know, whether, um, you know, I, I, I believe that my dad will definitely win. I mean, he's he's got a, a strong group of support and he's just been so um, valuable to the community. He does so much. Uh, the Actually, one of the things I've been, we've worked on together as a county and city was the first dog park. And, uh, you know, that was a great uh, experience. And he actually volunteered to build the fence. And so uh, uh, a lot of the volunteers from the Canine Society and, and the community all came out. And, uh, uh, but my, my dad was one of the ones that volunteered to build the fence on the dog park. So, you know, he's really, really um, done a lot for the community. I was going to say, uh, you know, we st- stagger some terms in politics. Mm-hmm. So, so when are you looking forward to, uh, to another campaign? Well, um, my seat is actually up, and so um, I figured uh, uh, since I haven't declared officially, and this is my last radio <laughs> spot, uh, that I would announce that I am seeking re-election. I've, I've served one term, and, and I uh, would be grateful for the support of the community if, if they have found my contributions to be worthy and, and they like my views on things. Um, then I would just love their support in this upcoming election. I will be seeking re-election for seat seven. And I was going to say, uh, it, it starts to get busy here. It's interesting, though, when you talk a little bit about uh, some elections, not even till next May, we've already got two candidates for sheriff, for instance. And we've, have, we've had them for several months. Uh, people get started, I guess, early now in order to get the word out about uh, a campaign. Yeah, some people do. It seems to be uh, a national trend, and maybe that, you know, usually it's the opposite. It's kind of grassroots movements that move towards the national level, but that that is a very, you know, obviously we're, we're having, uh, you know, an experience with lots of debates for president, <laughs> you know, when it's, it is a, a year or so off. So, um, you know, maybe it's, it's something that some people like to do. I, uh, elections are, are difficult, so um, I'm really glad that I uh, as a city council person, it's nonpartisan, and you only have a general election. You don't have to go through a primary. Sure, so, sure. Uh, it, the shorter, the better, I say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Rebecca Milsweka, we want to welcome you back. Thank you. And uh, we'll probably talk to you during campaign season, too, as well, I'm sure. I hope so. And uh, we'll be seeing people as that gets a little bit closer as well. 20 minutes after 9 o'clock, 71. You're listening to Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com.